okay? They're all fucking liars. They're all fucking manipulators. So just pick the rich one. Fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's causing quite a stir. Women losing their minds as more and more men aren't interested in dating and relationships. What's behind this growing trend? Are men stepping away from traditional dating for good? Or is this a response to modern relationship dynamics? Stick around as we break it all down and explore what's really going on in the world of love and dating. Make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. You won't want to miss this one. Ladies, men's primary focus is not relationships. They are biologically selfish. And they can come in the comments here and deny it until they're blue in the face. But this is the facts. And the quicker you realize this as a woman, the happier you will be in this life. Once you realize that a man does not give an F about you, you will be happier as a woman. When you start to think this way, you will naturally prioritize yourself. And that is something that as women, we should have done many years ago. We should have done centuries ago. And I don't just mean being out here for survival. No, I mean really decentering men and centering ourselves. Men's primary focus is not relationships. It's career, status, and personal goals. Where's relationships in that? Doesn't exist. Because men don't center their lives around relationships. In fact, they see relationships as just like an addition, as something that's just kind of there, just kind of there lingering. They don't go out seeking relationships. They go out seeking pleasure. Oh, yeah. And we're going to we're going to trigger some men today because they're not going to like that. Oh, no, we care about love. No, you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. And the younger you realize this as a girl as well, by the way, the happier you will be. Because ladies, men do not give an F about you and they never will. Because they are not wired to care about you. They are wired to feel fulfillment through doing things like providing and protecting. They get a hit of dopamine from doing those things. So when they take care of you and they, they do these manly things that they are supposed to do, that are their duties, they get a hit of dopamine. Okay? The happy hormones, they feel good. That's it. That's as far as it goes with a man. He's never going to feel anything else for you. He's not going to feel that undenying love that you've been taught in the fairy tales that we've been taught as young girls growing up that, you know, there's Prince Charming. There was nothing charming about Prince Charming. And all the princesses, they were silenced. They had to sacrifice things in order to be princesses. They were controlled. They were watched. The fairy tales really aren't fairy tales. And the quicker you realize this, the happier you will be in life. And you will stop putting your life on pause and wasting all your good years. When men don't care about you, they don't care about you. They don't. They've showed you consistently, time after time, that they don't care about you. They don't care about women. Men only respect other men. When has a man ever really valued your opinion? I'll wait. I'll wait. When has a man ever valued your opinion? Oh, but if his friend said the same thing to him that you said to him, he would take his friend's advice. He would listen to his friend. He would value his friend's view above yours. But yet you still want to sit here and be like, oh, no, 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 like my man like really cares about me and he really listens to me and he really, you know, like listens to what I've got to say and he cares about what I have to say. Does he? Does he? Or is he just doing it because he feels like he has to and he wants a happy life? Ladies, 
wake up and smell the coffee. Men do not give an F about you and they never will. And I'm saying that not to be horrible and not to be mean. And I have been, I have been targeted on here. I get hateful DMs by these triggered men, but you know what? I don't care. I don't care. I continue to post this content and I continue to send out this message because this is a safe space for women to finally find their voice and find their power. Here's the harsh truth. When Chad won't commit, the whole gender somehow gets the blame. Let's be real. This woman didn't just randomly end up in this situation. She chose the wrong guy. She knew who he was, saw the red flags, and still went full speed ahead. And now, instead of owning up to it, she's out here blaming all men. Ladies, let me tell you something. This isn't on men as a whole. This is about learning how to pick wisely. Stop romanticizing the bad boys, the ones who treat relationships like disposable trends. Then, when they don't commit, it's suddenly, oh, men don't want relationships anymore. No, the reality is you gambled with your heart and lost. You think they don't want relationships? Wrong. Men just don't want relationships where they're constantly being blamed for things they didn't even do. They're tired of being the recovery project after a string of bad decisions. These days, a lot of guys are realizing they're happier single, peaceful, drama-free, and focusing on their goals. But here's the kicker. Women don't get it. They think men are avoiding commitment because men have issues. No, it's because men are tired of being treated like the consolation prize after someone else's bad choices. So, let's get one thing straight. Men aren't the problem here. The problem is picking guys who clearly don't want what you want and then acting surprised when it doesn't work out. Chad isn't committing because he never planned to. Men are out here doing their thing, enjoying their lives, and they're not chasing relationships that come with unnecessary baggage. If you want something real, learn to pick properly. The good ones are out there. They just aren't sticking around for the drama. Harsh? Maybe. But sometimes the truth stings. Ladies, the sooner you figure it out, the better. As women, we cannot always blame men for the fact that we cannot find a good man. Because I know, I know we hate to hear it, but sometimes we are the problem. And if you're new here, before you start, I don't cape for men. If you watch my videos, you will see that I drag them by their singlet daily. But the truth is the truth, and we talk about accountability on this page. So if you're ready to hear it, let's go. A lot of women are still very immature when it comes to their expectations around dating and relationships. Like, if you ask a lot of women what's important to them, a lot of women will still say height. And I'm not saying height cannot be a preference, but I'm saying you have to be able to be adaptable to what is really and actually important to sustain a good relationship. I hate to say it, but a lot of women are just standing around waiting for handouts. I hate to say it, but... As a person, you don't bring any value or you are waiting for a man to bring all the value. So you almost become like a debt to men. So why would they come and commit to you? And I hate to say it because I hate to feed into the rules of the patriarchy because men's fixation with virtue is very weird to me considering how they operate. But some of you, your reputation has preceded you. That is the truth. And I hate that's the truth, but it's the truth. And the men who judge women based on virtue will and have judged you. Like aesthetically, there are so many like beautiful, beautiful women who are not happy with how they look. And they just choose not to address it or let it limit them instead of just tackling the challenge and living the best life of themso themselves in the version of themselves that they prefer. And I am not shaming anybody because I had to lose a lot of weight. But do I prefer myself in this body than that body? Yes. Did I love myself any different? No. But is life more fun? Yes. Was it hard to do? Oh my God. It was so irritatingly long. But life is more fun. Women in general, we can have bad attitudes and we need to work on that because at the end of the day, an attitude contributes to the environment and who wants to be in a negative environment? Like regardless of men's fault in dating, which men have many, many faults when it comes to dating, to in my opinion, more faults than women, but regardless of that, we should still always be striving to be better. 
we should still always be striving to improve and function our, our highest self. So a lot of women are going to say, oh, like, I don't want to do it for men. And I get that. But do it for yourself. Like, be better for yourself. Like, I know for a fact that I like the me version of me much more than I would like the 21 version of me. And that's not to say I wasn't a good person. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, but me now is better. <laughs> So there's like, there's nothing wrong with growth. And the fact that that growth can then contribute to you finding a partnership and someone that you can like and love and feel equal to and look in the eye and build a, a relationship based on respect and mutual admiration. Like I don't think that as women, we give that enough value. I don't think that as women, we realise how much more we have to contribute when we come from a place of being able to stand on our own two feet. But where you guys get confused is you hear that and you think I'm telling you to run after these little mice that are scurrying down there ready to just eat you alive. No, I'm not telling you to entertain those men. So what I'm saying is elevate to the highest version of you and then go out there and take your time and secure the highest version of the men out there because then you will be able to access them with ease honey and also just to add i get that women have been through a lot at the hands of men so i'm never judging i just want us to kind of always elevate regardless of men like i don't want the reason we didn't reach our full potential or our best happiness is because a man had done us dirty that's kind of all it is because the reality is we're in a system set up by men and we're currently trapped in the matrix right now so we really have to operate in a way where we can get the best version of our lives. And sometimes that does mean operating by the rules of the game. I'm sorry. It's not, I don't care about your body count, but these men can. If you're trying to get to these men, that's it. And it's not the end all and be all if you have been promiscuous, but just work on not being promiscuous going forward. Because the more distance you give yourself from that situation, the less relevant it becomes. Don't listen to men. And if men like you, they don't care that you're a hoe anyway. That's the truth. They just don't want other people to know. So be discreet, girls. <laughs> Lol. Anyway, like I always say, there's always an exception to the rule. For best results, assume it's not you. Mwah. Here's the thing. Good men are everywhere, but let's be honest. Many women overlook them because they label what they offer as boring. And what do these good men want? The basics. Duty respect, responsibility, peace, and a stable life. Not exactly outrageous demands, right? But somehow, those qualities get dismissed as unexciting. And let's not sugarcoat it. This isn't a men issue. It's a women issue. The real problem is the refusal to take accountability. Instead of recognizing when they've passed up a good man, they point fingers, blame society, or claim there's a man shortage. Spoiler alert, there isn't. Think about it. How many women have walked away from stable, hardworking men because they were too predictable or lacked excitement, only to end up complaining about the very chaos they chose? It's the same cycle over and over again. Chase the thrill, avoid the responsibility, and then wonder why they can't find a long-term partner. Good men aren't out here playing games. They're building lives, staying consistent, and offering stability. But instead of appreciating that, Plenty of women see it as a lack of ambition or spark. Yet when those same women hit a rough patch, suddenly they're looking for a man to fix everything. Here's the hard truth. If you keep calling good men boring, don't be surprised when you're left with chaos. Stability might not be flashy, but it's what keeps a relationship thriving long after the fun fades. And if that's not appreciated, then the issue isn't the men. It's the standards you've set. Good men? They'll keep doing what they're doing, offering peace, stability, and loyalty. The real question is, how long will it take before women start valuing what really matters? Because trust me, good men aren't going to wait around forever. So I've arrived back in Cork, home sweet home, for a weekend only, and my parents are like, while you're back home, you should try and go on a date, because obviously they're desperately wanting me to move back and hoping that I'll find an Irish man which I do, I'm trying to find an Irish man. So anyway, went through all these different matches and was chatting to a guy. We arranged to meet last night and then last night came, eight o'clock came and he just didn't acknowledge the fact that we were even meeting up. At half a state, he addressed that he wouldn't be good company and that um, he couldn't meet up and could we reschedule. 
obviously that's not going to happen because I'm going away. And if it's taken him that long to tell me that he didn't want to meet up with me at 20 past eight, that's not really a good sign, is it? So that one's done. Then there was another guy, Wes Cork, messaging him. Seemed like grand chat. Then I was like, let's cut to the chase and try and organise drinks. No rep. And then let me just tell you, there is men a lot, 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 lot older than me. A lot. Asking me to go on dates with them. And it's honestly making me feel like shit. So um, in terms of going for a drink in Cork, how is it so hard? I would like to think that there's like some really fit, normal, nice guys out there, Irish guys, that would want to go on a date. But you know what? I'm convinced that all the fit ones are taken, gay or deceased, as Sabrina Carpenter actually says in her tracks. <laughs> so there's no hope, no hope, no hope. And all I want is a creamy Guinness, just one. Here's the thing. The good men, they've either been snapped up already or they bowed out saying, no thanks. And honestly, can you blame them? Think about it. Women out here expect a lot, like a lot. And it's not just high standards. It's unrealistic standards. Add to that the fact that a lot of men have been taken advantage of, tossed into the friend zone, or ghosted for no reason. And don't even get me started on dating apps. Getting a real conversation out of a woman on those platforms feels like a miracle these days. So, men are saying, why bother? Why put in the effort when all you get back is attitude, games, and zero accountability? Some women think they can bring masculine energy into relationships and it'll work out. Spoiler alert, it doesn't. That vibe might be okay for weekend fun, but it's not relationship material. Men want peace. They want femininity. They want partnership, not competition. The more women double down on this overly independent, hyper-masculine approach, the more men will keep stepping away. It's not about women not needing men. It's about men deciding they don't need the drama. So, if women are wondering where all the good men went, they might want to look in the mirror. You can't act like a man and expect to attract one for anything more than a weekend. That's just facts. Ladies, please always be prepared for a man to switch up on you. They love to switch up, and you know they do. Men will always switch up on you. Doesn't matter how you've got him, okay? Doesn't matter if you've got three houses with him. He'll switch up on you. He'll switch up on you with a ring on your hand. He'll switch up with, on you while you've got 10 kids with him, okay? If there's one thing about men is they will always switch up on you. And they will do it, and they will feel no type of way about it, okay? This is how they see if you have an emotional attachment to them. And they do this usually early on in the stages because they're trying to see, like, have I got her? Have I got her? Because remember, ladies, I've said in my other videos, I've said in so many of my videos, it is a game. Okay? If you are not mentally strong as a woman right now, do not enter the dating game. It is treacherous out there. The streets are cold, okay? And it is a game. And you have got... The men out here who are wearing masks that are just out here to manipulate you, okay? He's not being honest with himself. He doesn't even know whether he's coming or going. You've got the ones who are talking, talking so much, and they have nothing to offer a woman, okay? You've got all kinds of men out there. So as a woman, you need to be prepared. You need to have the right tools and be fully equipped to enter the dating game, okay? And one of the things that men are going to do is they're going to test you, okay? Emotional triggers, this is what it's called, emotional triggers. Early on, when you're getting to know a guy, you're going through the dating stages with them, especially if you haven't really had any kind of deep conversations. Usually in the beginning, it's quite fun. It's very surface level. You know, no one's really getting that deep, right? That is usually the stage where men are trying to figure out, okay, do I have her? Do I have her? Because again, it's a game. It's literally a game. Do I have her now? Do I have her? Once he knows he has you, and the way he knows he has you is you're going to get emotional. They know that they have you as soon as you show emotion. Emotion is, oh, you didn't text me. Oh, like I really wanted to see you today. You never ever initiate 
seeing a guy. You never, ever initiate seeing a guy. How many times have you initiated seeing a guy and you felt so crap afterwards? You felt so, ugh, like, why did I do that? Not worth it. Not worth it, ladies. It's never worth it. It's never, ever worth it. Men are not stupid. Men know if they want you, they have to go and get you. (laughs) Men know if they want something, they have to go and get it. This is what they're taught from a very young age. If you want something, go and get it. So what do you think? That man's blind? You think that man's stupid? He doesn't know what he's doing? He knows what he's doing. Ladies, what you tolerate is what you accept. What you tolerate is what you accept. So if a man comes across a woman who has very weak boundaries and she's accepting nothing but the bare minimum, you're accepting last minute dates. You're accepting someone calling you past midnight. You're accepting someone being like, oh, I'm really sorry. I fell asleep. Oh, I'm really sorry. I was going to get you a present. If you're accepting this poor behavior at the start, oof, this guy is going to treat you so bad. This guy is literally going to take you through the ringer with him. Okay. Ladies, you need to wake up and you need to start practicing detachment. You have to get to a point where you have completely mastered detachment. And detachment is not suppressing your feelings and your emotions and like just, you know, acting like I don't care. No, we don't do that. We don't act out here. We genuinely don't care. And how you don't care is you work on yourself. Fall in love with yourself. Fall so deeply in love with yourself and your life and where your life is going. I want you to really pour into yourself. I want you to give yourself the love that none of these men have ever given you. That is how you master detachment. You're so in love with yourself that the love that someone else gives you it feels very mediocre. It feels very mediocre. It doesn't, it's not doing anything for you. You really love yourself. Like, it's funny because when someone says something to me, I'm like, yeah, I know. Like, I literally know. I used to speak to a guy once who would always give me these compliments. And then I was like, yeah, I know. And then he was like, oh, that's weird that you're saying I know. And I was like, what's weird that I know that I'm an amazing person that I know that I'm incredible that I know my value is what's weird about that I'm so confused like you're literally telling me how beautiful and amazing I am and he told me that I had this great aura I'm like yeah I worked hard to have that magnetic aura like yeah tell me something I don't know do you know what I mean here's the thing when it comes to commitment the narrative's pretty clear Men rarely switch up on their wives or throw away their families for their own happiness. It's usually women who make that call. Let's be real for a second. Most men, when they get married, they're in it for the long haul. They'll work overtime, sacrifice their personal hobbies, even endure less than ideal situations just to keep the family together. Why? Because they see their family as their responsibility, their anchor, their purpose. But then you see women who hit a point where they start questioning everything. They want to find themselves or they're unfulfilled. Or, here's the classic, the spark is gone. And just like that, years of effort, love, and loyalty get tossed aside. Why? Because they're chasing some fleeting sense of happiness that, honestly, might not even exist. And here's the kicker. They're not just gambling with their own future. They're gambling with their husband's stability and their kids' well-being, too. But that's rarely talked about, is it? Somehow, the conversation always shifts to how she deserves better, or she's just trying to be happy. But what about the man who stayed? The man who sacrificed? Does his happiness not matter? Look, I'm not saying every man is perfect, far from it. But when it comes to loyalty, most men don't pull the plug on their families for selfish reasons. They tough it out they adapt, they compromise. Meanwhile, women are out here reading one self-help book and deciding they need to start fresh. If you're going to make vows, they need to mean something. Marriage isn't about being happy every second of every day. It's about weathering storms together. So, before anyone switches up, maybe it's time to take a hard look in the mirror and ask, am I leaving because it's genuinely unbearable or because I don't want to put in the work? I have no fucking friends. I have no fucking family. 
and I'm losing my mind because I'm alone every day, every fucking day. Sunday, I sit home alone. Monday, I go to work, come home, sit here alone. Tuesday, I go to work, come home, sit here alone. Wednesday, I go to work, come home, sit here alone. Thursday, I sit home alone. Friday, I go to work and come home and sit home alone. Saturday, I go to work and come home and sit home alone. I'm always fucking alone. Why doesn't anybody want to fucking spend time with me? I'm not a bad person. I used to be fucking fun. I used to have friends. I used to have family. People used to enjoy me. I used to be funny. Why? Where the fuck is everybody? Is everybody so busy? I need people. I live alone in a camper. Where are my friends? Here's something a lot of women don't want to hear. If you're not happy alone, you won't be happy with a man. And that's the harsh truth. Think about it. How often do we see women jumping from one relationship to the next, thinking this one will fix everything? Spoiler alert, it doesn't. Why? Because happiness isn't something you outsource. It's not about what a man can bring to your life. It's about what you already bring to your own. And let's be real, this comes down to accountability. Too many women walk into relationships expecting a man to fix their insecurities, fill their emotional gaps, and make them whole. That's not love. That's dependency. Host leans back, a bit stern. If you're not happy alone, it means you're expecting a man to carry all the emotional weight. And guess what? That's not his job. It's exhausting, and it's why so many relationships fail. A healthy relationship isn't about fixing each other. It's about building together. So, before you go searching for the one, maybe ask yourself, are you the one for you? Because if you can't enjoy your own company, why should anyone else? Happiness starts with you. Work on that, and everything else will fall into place. Every man's fear has got to be getting into a relationship with a retired bop and you don't know she's a bop. And it's like a canon event for all of us. It's a fear that's bound to happen. It's very rare when a man doesn't accidentally date a bop and if they don't want you to find out early you're not gonna find out early if she was a bop or not yes they do expose themselves but they do know how to keep things to themselves why do you think so many women can cheat and you will never know because they will take it to the grave with them now if they really trust you and feel comfortable with you that's when they tell you about their bot pass, which is later on. But when it's later on, it's too late because you're already in love. And when you're in love, you let things slide. Or they could tell you something bad about themselves and you don't even really look too deep into it. It's kind of just there. That's tough. Here's the thing. Every man's nightmare? Getting into a relationship with a retired bop without realizing she's a bop. And who's to blame here? Women. Let's break it down. You've got women who spent years living their best lives, partying, and chasing the wrong kind of attention. But when it's time to settle down, suddenly, they're looking for a man to wipe the slate clean. As if. Here's the harsh truth. Your past matters. You don't get to pretend it didn't happen just because you're ready to move on. Men aren't out here trying to commit their time, energy, and future to someone who made no effort to preserve their own value. And let's not act like this isn't avoidable. Women love to preach about standards and red flags, but accountability? Nowhere to be found. They'll judge a man for where he is financially, but get defensive when he questions her choices. It's not about perfection, it's about honesty. If you want to be taken seriously, start by owning your past. Stop expecting men to commit without knowing who they're really with. Because trust me, the fear of the unknown is real, and it's on you to be upfront. Retired or not, transparency is key. Otherwise, don't be surprised when men keep their distance. Accountability isn't optional. I actually learned something from being here. What'd you learn? Um, I, 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 okay, I was good. leading with emotion. Okay. Because I definitely, when you put it in the perspective of, um, you know, the, the bigger population, right? Yeah. And not looking at the exceptions. I learned. You're absolutely right. And that's something that I need to go back and be like, all right, sis, you know, let me, let me check that out. Keep teaching us, please. 
First time in history seeing a woman full admitting her wrongs and learning with open heart. Finally, an honest woman. The problem is not that they don't understand. They do, but ego won't let them admit it. That's the problem. This woman will go far with her honesty.